from Wana Brands. Welcome to Enhance Your Life. I'm your host, Jonathan Small, and each week I talk to people from all sorts of professions and backgrounds about how cannabis has enhanced their lives and how this healing plant can enrich your life too. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Enhance Your Life podcast. My name is John Small, and I am your host. And today we are going to talk about one of my favorite topics, CBD. And we have a perfect person to talk about it with, Lauren Wilson is joining us. Hello, Lauren. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. Lauren is a passionate and experienced advocate for cannabis use with three CBD books under her belt, including The CBD Solution Living and The CBD Solution Wellness. And Lauren believes cannabis can be a tool in a more holistic toolkit for health and wellness. Her latest books were done in partnership with Mary Jane, which is Snoop Dogg's company, and they are part of her CBD solution series so lauren welcome to the show thank you so you have used cannabis recreationally and medicinally before you even wrote about it can you tell me a little bit about your experience uh, with cannabis kind of when it started and how, mm -hmm. how, how it was introduced into your life yeah so i think that i have a story that's probably similar to lots of folks out there in that my first introduction to cannabis was as a young person mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was something that i really only engaged with for fun with friends as a teenager for many years and it wasn't until i was a much older adult you know in my 30s that i started to engage with cannabis on a more what I call what I consider to be a more meaningful level in that I had herniated discs in my neck. So chronic pain sucked. Mm -hmm. No fun. Don't like it. <laughs> no. <laughs> and and so, you know, I had prescription drugs from my doctor that were not even pain meds. They were muscle relaxants to help with managing the chronic pain that I had, because in addition to like the pain in the neck, then all the surrounding muscles get really tense and it was just no fun. And those medications worked well enough, but I was a zombie after I took them. I would take them at night and the next day I would just be dragging my feet the whole day. My brain would kind of be in a state of sludge. I had to be so sparing about when I used them. Mm. And so cannabis offered me a lot of the same relief, but without the, without yeah, the without side, the side effects. effects. I could, exactly. I could get up the next day, live my life. And that was a real blessing for me. Yeah. But in starting to use cannabis in that way, and of course I knew people used cannabis medicinally, but I never really thought much about it until I myself was using it medicinally. And I realized how many more people were out there actually using it medicinally. And so my frame of reference got bigger and bigger as I learned about other people using cannabis medicinally. Oh, wait, there's a whole group of people out there advocating for these patients and advocating for legalization. And oh, wait, there's this whole crazy history of cannabis prohibition in this country. I'm from Canada originally. Mm -hmm. And so my view just kept getting bigger and bigger. And this was back in probably 2016 ish legalization was start like we had Colorado, then we had California as far as adult use goes. And so I could see that the tide was turning as far as social opinions and acceptance of cannabis. And so at that point, I had already written two cookbooks. So I had lived my life for many years as a professional cook. I worked in restaurants, I worked as a chef, and then I moved into teaching. And so I had done two cookbooks and was endeavoring to do my third. And I wanted my third book to be a cannabis cookbook. So I was going to do an edibles book. I still intend to do it someday. <laughs> someday. But my career, my career kind of got pulled into another direction, which is great. But in, in starting to connect with people in the industry, meet people here in New York that were working on advocacy and education, I got connected to a woman named Eileen Konieczny, who is kind of like an OG advocate. She was involved in writing the medicinal, like the medical patient regulation for New York State. And she's just been advocating for medical patients for decades. And so she had a book deal. She needed to write a book about CBD but she was not a writer. Mm -hmm. So we connected and I teamed up with her to write the book. She was the medical brain. I was the writer brain. And we did Healing with CBD, which was my first CBD book. And then from there, I just got pulled into writing about cannabis. I did two more books, as you mentioned, the CBD solution. And through that process, especially when we talk, we're talking about CBD, 
writing that book was a crash course for me in cannabis science and how it works in the body and all of that fun stuff, which was a joy for me because I'm a huge nerd in many different ways. So that was really cool. But also in looking at the CBD landscape, and granted, this book came out in 2018, before, before the farm bill, just before the farm bill. So things have changed a lot since then. But in many ways, the landscape for consumers is still really tough to navigate. And so I became really passionate because I myself was figuring this out and writing Healing with CBD. And then I realized, well, if I'm having all, all this trouble, I'm sure right, a lot you're of folks are researching it. Yeah, exactly. So how come so, you chose to write about CBD specifically and not about the THC part of cannabis and it, it was CBD just more accessible. Did you think to people or? Well, when I connected with Eileen to do healing with CBD, she was tasked with writing very specifically, yeah, specifically. about CBD. Right. I think that the publisher was very smart to know that CBD, the CBD trend was only going to continue to grow and they wanted to get a book out about CBD. So I just started there and all facets of the cannabis industry and the cannabis space, there is so much to know. And so I just got pulled into CBD and like, I still don't know everything there is to know about CBD. So I continue to learn there. That being said, once you sort of understand the basic science of CBD, it isn't a far cry to understand the basic science of THC and the other cannabinoids and so uh, it's not it's not that I don't have an interest in them. It's just that CBD is so of the moment. Yeah, you know, I kind of just got pulled in that direction. Right. Yeah. Maybe it'll be CBN next time or whatever. But right now, it's definitely sure. something that everybody's using. So one yeah. of the real clever things about your book, The CBD Solution Living, the newest one, is that it's mm -hmm. sort of CBD in every room of your house, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. let's talk about, let's take us through the rooms. And maybe we can go through some rituals that people can do or experiment with CBD in the different rooms. So let's start mm -hmm. with, I guess we wake up in the morning and we go to, I don't know, what's the first application of CBD? What room are you in? And what's the first sort of application of CBD in, in your life or in your book? Well, okay. So I'll say a couple of things. The first thing is that, so I was writing this book pre-pandemic mm -hmm. and then it came out in March of 2021. In some ways, it's kind of fortuitous, right? Because people were it, locked in their houses. Exactly. Sincerely, <laughs> right. it was amazing to me, the timing of that book. Right. Because as you said, people were locked in their house. It's like, well, what are you going to do? You're going to go. So when I was in high school, we had this thing. And I grew up, I, I went to high school in Canada. I don't know if American teens did the same thing. But we did this thing as teenagers when we couldn't technically be going to bars, but we would do this thing called a room crawl. Every room of the house would be a different theme with different music and like people would decorate the room for the theme and you just kind of go from room to room and have a party. And it was super fun and cute. But I mean, this is essentially what this book ended up being is like you go through, you can go through a room crawl in every room of your house, which was a very good pandemic pastime. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so let's say you go to your bathroom. Two of my favorite kind of bathroom related rituals in and around CBD. One is a, a CBD face mask. Mm -hmm. So in the book and, and what I do myself is oftentimes, most often I will make my own CBD oils. So I'll buy hemp, infuse the oils, and then you can use the oils in all sorts of different ways. So one of which is a CBD face mask, which is really nice. And then another, which I can't say is due solely to the magical properties of, uh, hemp plant or cannabis plant, if you want to use that, because it has a bunch of other botanicals in it as well and herbs. But there's a burn salve that as a professional cook, I would get burns frequently. Mm -hmm. It just kind of happened. But even if you're not a professional cook, and even if you burn yourself in your kitchen at home, or even you get a little sunburn, yep. this salve, I swear, is like, a, it, it works so well. What is it? Um, Give us a secret recipe. Can you? I can't tell you the whole thing off the top of my head only because I don't remember because it has a whole bunch of different things, but it has CBD oil. It has comfrey, which is a plant that has very like anti-inflammatory right. burn healing properties. It has honey. It has olive oil. It has lavender. And there are some other goodies in there. That I'm, I'm sure. sure so why, why should people do it themselves as opposed to buying the ready-made stuff? Is there an advantage to doing your own CBD? Yes and no, and it depends, is my answer. So there are so many great products out there now, yeah. and technology has come so far. And while it still can be difficult for people to find safe, efficacious, good quality products because of the way the CBD landscape is not regulated by the FDA and all the things that go along with that, but I marvel at the types of products that are out there and how the industry is innovating and evolving. So I think that, I mean, I personally buy products and make my own products, and it depends on if you like doing crafty things, do that. You don't have to, though, because there's lots of good options out there. Right. 
for me personally, I like to make my own oils because I can use them in a whole bunch of different ways. So they're Mm. versatile in that way. And because cost wise, as someone who uses CBD to help manage pain, it can, it's just cheaper for me to buy hemp and make my own oil. So. All right. So take me to the kitchen now. What is one of your, you don't have to tell me the exact recipe, but one is one of the more delicious recipes in your book that Mm -hmm. it seems to be very popular. You know, there are some good recipes in this book, I have to say. I was really happy with the collection I put together. But I will say probably, okay, I'll give a healthy and, and perhaps a not so healthy. Okay. Because I mean, I'm, I'm just I'm writing down the unhealthy one. So, <laughs> Well, there's this there's this recipe. It's called, uh, the, the recipe in the book is called banana eton mess. So an eton mess is a traditional English dessert, which is basically just a meringue. So you know those like egg white mm-hmm. meringue confections? It's a meringue with mashed banana, peanuts, and fudge sauce, and with some CBD oil. Yum. Mix, of course. Um, you and have then, me a fudge you, sauce. Right? <laughs> right. I mean, it, it's still, it kind of tastes like a Reese's peanut butter cup, you know, oh if, you're, if you're into that flavor profile, which yep. I definitely am. Um, so that's, that's um, a treat. And then if you want a healthier option, I mean, there's a good smoothie recipe in there. There's cacao matcha balls, which are just like little energy bites that are cacao, um, green matcha, sesame, tahini, dates. So that's like just, that's a a healthier version of a sweet treat that you can kind of just pop during the day. And you cover them in hemp seeds so you get a nice little crunchy. Yum. For textural intrigue. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's talk about the bedroom. You actually say that in one of your books, it's for cannabis for sleep, skin, sex. I think we talk a lot about sleep and, and CBD, mm-hmm. so we can skip mm-hmm. that for a minute. I'm curious sure. about sex life. Like, how does, is CBD, like, sorry, I'm just going to go there, you know? No, yeah, let's uh, go there. Let's go there. So how does one apply CBD to their sex life? Great question. And I will answer it, but I won't go in too much, into too much depth, only because the second book of the CBD Solutions series is all about CBD and sex. Okay. Uh, and it was written by a really lovely woman named Ashley Mon- uh, Manta, who goes by the moniker The Canisexual on social media. So oh, she wow. did a fantastic job with that book. So I don't want to regurgitate everything that's in that book or kind of step on her toes in any way. But I will say that CBD for sex. So I think my personal perspective, and I, I imagine Ashley would agree to this at least to, to some extent is that the way CBD can be most helpful, I think for most folks is in just kind of helping them relax a little bit Mm -hmm. and just kind of be a little bit more present in the moment, perhaps stopping those like thought loops that some people can get into, especially in vulnerable sexual situations. And then on top of that, CBD can be really helpful for people who experience pain or inflammation during sex. So it does have those benefits too. But I think that one thing that people sometimes maybe get a little bit confused about when talking about things like CBD lubes and other fun sex products is that it, it's not going to act in the same way that a THC infused lube or some other sex product might work. And because CBD doesn't stimulate our receptors, the cannabinoid mm-hmm. receptors we have in our bodies in the same way. So it's not like you're going to get a tingly fun experience from a CBD product. You can use it for, you know, pain relief, inflammation, just as a general lubricant if you wanted. It's it's just not quite the same as a THC right. infused product. Yeah. Do you think that it brings up an, a point that I want to ask you is that do you think CBD works without the THC in having a little bit of THC in it? There, I know the jury is sort of out on that. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, now sell, well, you have to sell you know, some without THC, products without THC to, to mm-hmm. sort of be legal in, in many um, places where THC is illegal. So we see that a lot, but I always wonder whether it needs THC to, to right. actually have the full benefit because that's the way nature makes it, right? Right, right. <laughs> so, And I mean, well, even with a hemp CBD product, there mm-hmm. is still, unless you're specifically buying like a broad isolate. spectrum yeah. as opposed to a full spectrum product that has absolutely no, no and THC. And we should explain what that is. Broad spectrum sure. is... Explain that real quick. So full spectrum is the full spectrum of cannabinoids and terpenes that would be naturally present in the hemp plant. But by law, a hemp plant can only have 0.3% THC by dry weight. So a full spectrum product will have a little bit of THC in it. Whereas a broad spectrum product will be further refined to remove all the THC. Mm. So that is essentially a TH 
healthy free product <laughs> as would be a CBD isolate product, which is literally so refined that it is almost Isolated. 100% pure CBD, right? Right. That being said, there is a little bit of THC in full spectrum products. And as far as what I see scientifically, and I mean, if I'm going to be really like literal about your question, does CBD work by itself? It does. I mean, mm -hmm. it does. It, it's a compound that we don't understand every little nuance of the you know mechanisms of action in our body, but we know we basically know how what it does in there to some extent, to a large extent. And so, yes, CBD will do things in your body without THC present. I think what you're really asking is like, what's the deal with the synergy between those two compounds? Yeah. And the jury is still out on that. Although I think that the tide, the way where I see the tide going is for supporting the fact that CBD and THC really do work better together, even mm. if you have THC in very small quantities. Yeah. I personally had always been, and I still am, a, a, you know, I, I like full spectrum products. I like to have the full profile of cannabinoids because there are a bunch of other cannabinoids. You know, there's over a hundred and hundred, some people say over 160 different cannabinoids in the plant. So there's a whole bunch of things happening in the plant aside from CBD and THC. There's the terpenes and the flavonoids. I personally like to go for full spectrum and I use full spectrum products. Scientifically, I keep tabs on what's happening with isolates and when they're used in medical research, generally the dosages need to be higher with isolates. I hadn't really tried them at all because I was just like, yeah, full spectrum and I make my own oils and that's kind of just what I did. But recently I have tried isolate products and I have felt the efficacy of them. Mm. So just from a personal perspective, CBD definitely does work. Great. On its own. It's good to know. But there's so much more going on as far as the synergy between all those compounds that we have a lot to we have a lot to discover on that front. And I'm sure there will be a lot to discover. Do you use C B D for sleep? Are you somebody that needs to use it for sleep? You know, or? when I first started using C B D, I really noticed how because it can be a stimulant in small doses. Yeah. So for me, having CBD was like having a cup of coffee. Mm. And so I didn't use CBD for sleep. And I was actually really conscious about what time of day I took it, because if I took it too late at night, it would keep me awake. That being said, I think there is research out there being done, looking specifically at CBD's impact on sleep and sleep cycles and what's happening when you're asleep after you've taken CBD. That being said, I think that probably one of the bigger mechanisms at play where as to how CBD helps people sleep is in relaxation mm -hmm. and CBD has an impact on our serotonin systems and that impacts our mood and our feelings of happiness. And so I think that by helping people feel relaxed is really how they're getting better sleep from CBD. Yeah. So I think it does help me sleep, but I won't take it right before bed to help me sleep. Right. That makes sense. I get it. Yeah, no, for sure. So you've been experimenting with CBD for a while now. And so mm -hmm. have there been any surprise benefits that you've noticed? Like people talk a lot about sleep. They talk a lot about its anti-inflammatory properties, chilling you out. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you were surprised to find that uh, a benefit of CBD? Yeah, actually, it's a really great question because I'm going through a realization of that nature right now. <laughs> at um, this, right now, at this moment during this interview. <laughs> well, I mean, in re like in the last week of my yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I suffer, I also suffer from migraines. Mm. And thankfully, historically, I, I've had them rarely. Um, so I've been quite fortunate. They're not a constant problem in my life. But over the last year, they've started to become a lot more frequent. And so for me, treating, like catching migraines involves taking a whole whack of Advil and Tylenol. And so I've had to do that several times over the last few months. And that takes a toll on your digestive system. So my stomach has started being real upset with that whole situation. And so over the last week, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pop like a, a good solid tablespoon of CBD oil and see what happens when I was actively experiencing upset stomach mm. and it's and it's helped tremendously oh that's awesome yeah I should try that because I'm Mr. Upset Stomach yeah <laughs> yep. give it I a shot because I mean with cider oh, vinegar with, yeah right but with a lot of tinctures you're taking like a little a milliliter isn't really that much and if it's in your mouth you know I mean how much is actually but I just consciously took a big old tablespoon swallowed it right down so yeah I would I give it a shot why not 
So what advice would you give to somebody who goes into a, whether it's a Whole Foods or into a dispensary and is looking at mm -hmm. CBD products, what should they be looking for? What they, should they be asking the, the, the bud tender or the shopkeeper about? Um, mm -hmm. Are there certain things that you always look for when you're vetting your CBD products? There are, and it's, I was having, I was asked this question literally yesterday by a friend that I hadn't seen since, you know, the start one. of the pandemic. Yeah. It, it's, well, the comment that I hear so often is I tried CBD and didn't do anything. It's like, yeah, CBD is supposed to help you sleep and it's supposed to help you relax, right. it's supposed to help, but I tried it and like nothing happened. And that's a big question because it could be for a number of reasons. And one of those reasons could be that maybe they didn't get a very good quality product because the FDA doesn't regulate. There's no real way to guarantee how much CBD is in your product. So I will say that companies now have taken some steps on their own in an effort to be transparent to consumers and say like, hey, this is what's in our product. We've had it tested by an independent lab. So if you look at a co companies who are kind of really trying to be, and it's the gold standard. I don't, I wouldn't recommend anyone buy a product from a company who isn't willing to provide something called a certificate of analysis, a yeah. COA. There can be issues with those too, as far as false reporting. But by and large, I would say definitely start with looking at a COA. So you, a COA will show you you know, company says, hey, this this bottle of tincture has a thousand milligrams of CBD in it. The COA should verify that, should be able to verify that. So basically a third a company who makes the tincture will send it out to a lab that will do tests and say like, yep, this is how much CBD is in here. This, these are the terpenes. So at the very least, look for those. And there are so many hemp CBD retailers online. You should be able to easily access that information from their websites. If you go into a dispensary, you can ask the bud tender for that information too. So that's one step to vetting CBD products. And then the more experience you get with CBD, then you can start to kind of dial in your experience to thinking a bit more detailed level about terpenes. Mm -hmm. um, so these are like flavor and aroma compounds that are in the plants, both cannabis and hemp plants that, and also plants and flowers, like terpenes are everywhere yeah. in your life. They're around you all the time, but they can have physiological effects. So a terpene like myrcene will help you relax or linalool will help you relax. Whereas limonene might be a little bit more stimulating. Mm -hmm. There are many ways that you can kind of like the kind of the way the endocannabinoid system works as a regulator, switching dials here and there to kind of keep your physiological tone balanced. There's dials and levers that you can pull and play with to kind of dial in your own experience with the plants. What's next for you? Like, what are you, are you working on another book? Yes. So book writing is my passion. I love to do it. I, I, also, I also do freelance writing, content marketing, copywriting for cannabis businesses, oh, but do. also the health and beauty and wellness space. So that kind of is my day-to-day -day gig, but book writing is really where my passion is. So right now I'm working on a book proposal, looking at the intersection between cannabis and mental health. Mm. Um, so I'm working with a therapist on that. And I think that that's I mean, especially now, um, it's, yeah. it's a very relevant very timely. Yes. I could I could use that book right now, and right. I live with a therapist. Yes, do you? Uh, I do. My wife is a therapist. Oh, amazing! Um, so that would be helpful uh, mm -hmm. for me to manage myself and to manage uh, her. No, <laughs> but <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, I I um, no, that would be really interesting. But it's true, and I've always been curious about how to use cannabis and. Uh, you know, just to help me with certain things like anxiety and mm -hmm. and stress and those kinds of things. So that'll be very cool. I think read. ultimately it comes down to no matter what you're using cannabis for, and, and, you know, that could be mental health, that could be physical health, that could be just for fun, relaxation. But I think that a really important way to improve your experience no matter what you're doing or why you're doing it is through mindfulness you know so just paying attention to if you're using cannabis for or cbd or what you know thc cbd what have you for let's say anxiety you have to kind of pay attention to what's happening when you do that you know and i'm a big proponent for journaling I'm like have a cbd journal have a cannabis journal mm. you know just jot down like okay at 10 o'clock in the morning i took 30 milligrams of this tincture and i did this and, and this is how i felt before and this is how i felt after and you can kind of that's, it's valuable data um, if you pay attention to it. That's really interesting. That's a great idea. Yeah. Also, yeah. you know, it remind me when you said your friends say that it doesn't work, 
You know, another mm-hmm. thing that I, I think people don't realize is that sometimes it, it takes a little time. Yeah. It doesn't work overnight for some people. And, and it's yeah. different for everybody. And that's the thing about cannabis. Yes. It really is different for everybody. Exactly. Um, and so yeah. I I was one of those people who was like, yeah, this is like snake oil, whatever. But then, you know, I started using it more regularly and I realized, oh, okay, I do actually feel the effects of it after a while. Right. So right. Um, I do think give it some time, you know, low and slow. Yep. Um, figure out what the right dose is for you. Because I think if I were to say the top three reasons why people are like CBD didn't do anything for me, probably wasn't the right dose for you. And how do you figure out the right dose? That's a tricky one. I, I, I've written about that in the past. I mean, I'm a huge proponent of the low and slow approach. Mm-hmm. If let's say you're already a regular cannabis consumer and you want to figure out what your ideal dose is, you, I think you kind of have to take a tolerance break, reset your system. So then you can actually titrate up to figure out what that, because oftentimes, you know, we, especially with THC, not so much with CBD, but with THC, you do develop a tolerance. And so you get to a point where your body just becomes conditioned to a, probably a higher dose than it needs. But THC, CBD, what have you, low and slow, going up, paying attention to like, you know, I'm taking five milligrams today, take five milligrams for a few days, go up to 10 milligrams, do that for a few days. And then once you notice you're at the level that of effects that you want to be at, you stop, Mm -hmm. you know, and uh, the lowest effective dose is kind of the way to go. More isn't necessarily better with cannabinoids. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Lauren, for, for joining us today. And this Thank is so fascinating. Me. The book, the newest book is called The CBD Solution Living. There's also The CBD Solution Wellness. And what, what's the other one? There's three, right? It's a, it's yep, a three. The CBD Solution Sex. Sex. Oh, well, yeah. of course. How could I forget <laughs> that one? The most important one. Um, have a wonderful rest of your day, Lauren Wilson. And, and uh, really, if people want to find out more information about you or your books, what should they do? Yeah, you can go to my website, Lauren M as in Michael Wilson.com, Lauren M Wilson.com, or you can find me on socials at Lauren does this. Cool. I like Lauren does this. I'm subscribing right now. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Well, that was really interesting. Thanks so much to Lauren Wilson for coming on the show. You know, we talked a lot about how to find quality CBD products, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention Wana Brands. Wana has a really innovative product called Wana Wellness Quick Fast Acting Hemp Tinctures. And this product uses nanotechnology to give you the effects of the CBD within 5 to 15 minutes. Now, traditional CBD tinctures are not readily absorbed by the body, but Wana Wellness's tinctures allow customers to absorb the CBD much more quickly. And another product I have by the side of my bed is their hemp gummies herbal supplements, and they're made with broad spectrum hemp oil. They also come in new smaller size packages so you can take them with you as you travel, and the flavors are delicious. I particularly like the mango. It also comes in strawberry. To order your Wana products, go to wanawellness.com. That's wanawellness.com. Tell them John sent you. Enhance Your Life is brought to you by WANA, the number one infused product in North America. WANA's entire process is designed to deliver the same great experience time after time. They have spent years fine-tuning their recipes so that their products are delicious, consistent, and potent. For more information, head on over to WANABrands.com. That's WANA, W-A-N-A, brands.com. 